Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon and you're watching Israeli News Live. Tonight is a very serious breaking news, a prophetic segment of our news broadcast. Uh, if this is your first time ever seeing our news broadcast, because we do believe that this video will definitely be uh, viral, and I encourage you, share this video everywhere you possibly can. If you've not subscribed, subscribe, because you're going to find out information tonight on Israeli News Live in our prophetic segment, things that you probably have never heard if it's your first time visiting. Now, Pope Francis, in his visit to the United States in September is going to fulfill biblical prophecy once again. Let me take you back, for those of you that do not know this broadcast, and share with you. In, in um, 2014, during the Passover to, uh, season, Pope Francis and his delegation came to Israel. Mount Zion was given to the Catholic Church. The Vatican took control of Mount Zion. And they held in the upper room on Mount Zion, a communion mass, or a mass, not a communion service, but a mass that the Catholic Church held there. Pope Francis led it, sat there with his fish crown on his head there in the upper room and held a mass with only the men in his delegation and the, the, uh, the men that were the priests there in Israel, right there on Mount Zion. It fulfilled the prophecy of Obadiah. Now, what's important to note, in the book of Obadiah, the, uh, Obadiah shows that it's Esau's descendants who are actually the Romans because he sits there and blames Esau for the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and the dispersion or the taking into captivity the house of Judah. Actually, they were dispersed throughout the nations there. And God blames Esau for this, but we know that Titus, the Roman general, was the one that was there. Now, interesting scholars say that it was actually the Syrian armies that did all the, the dirty work. And clearly in the scripture, God declares that Esau stood there as if as one of them. So even God, through the prophet Obadiah, clearly shows us that Esau was not alone. And of course, we can understand why, because the one descendant of Esau that escaped the sword of David was Hadad, raised under the hand of Pharaoh when he escaped to Egypt, later requests leave and becomes the king of Syria. So he has a great tie with the Syrian people, just as the Catholic Church has a great tie with the Muslim world today and greets all kinds of havoc in the Muslim world against Israel, a true anti-Semitic organization to its very core and only going to get worse. Now, in Obadiah, let me take you to the 16th verse of chapter 1. And it states here, Because just as you drank on my holy mountain, all nations will drink continually. They will drink and swallow and become as they had never existed. But on Mount Zion will be those who escape, and it will be holy, and the house of Jacob will possess their possessions. So the holy mountain is Mount Zion where they drink. But what you don't realize is how do we know that Pope Francis was actually fulfilling this biblical prophecy spoken by the prophet Obadiah? It's very simple. All you have to do is look at it in the Hebrew language. It says, Kika shashatetim al kodeshi. See, it is in the masculine plural, and it says, because, uh, because uh, that you have drank upon my holy mountain. In the masculine plural, Pope Francis, his delegation and the priests that were there were men only that partook in, that partook in the mass ceremony. They have video footage of it clearly depicting that it was men only during that mass. But in the very next line, Ishatu kol hagoim tamid, and they will continually drink See, showing that the communion service would continue on, or the mass that the Catholic Church does on Mount Zion. Isn't that interesting? But at this time, uh, where it says here, Ishatu, which is gender inclusive in the plural, and it's the Goim, see, Kol uh, HaGoim, all the nations or all the Gentiles, showing that it's not Jews that are drinking on the mountain, but it is so called professing Christians that are drinking on God's holy mountain. But have no fear, there will be deliverance. Because what did God say in verse 21 of Obadiah, the last verse in this chapter? He says, the deliverers will ascend Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau, and the kingdom will be the Lord's. The two witnesses are those deliverers. You actually have in the King James saviors, but it's deliverers is actually what the word is there. And it is in the plural. Alu uh, Moshayim. Uh, uh, See, Bahatzion, there will be deliverers. 
deliverers. It is your two witnesses coming to deliver the children of Israel and open their eyes to the true gospel. Now, I said to you that prophecy, because Pope Francis fulfilled this in 2014 during the Passover ceremony, and even more recently because of the, the uh, connections that the Vatican has, according to Daniel chapter 11, they come up strong with a small people, which are the Palestinians, and the power that they are wielding there, they have declared, just in 2015, the Vatican declared the Palestinians a state, officially declaring them a state. It gave the French government a great motivation to say that they're bringing to the forefront once again to declare the Palestinians a state at the United Nations, and Obama is claiming he will not veto it this time. And so therefore, the Palestinians will be a state. Now, I have said to the people in the past, Shimon Perez, who is none other than a type of the son of Ahab, he married Jezebel and brought idolatry into Israel. When he married the Vatican in 1993 and 94 through the cords that he, that he made with the Vatican, and he promised to give them Jerusalem as an international city in order to what? Fake a millennial reign, which is exactly what they're doing. The infrastructure is being built for this international city, not just the rail system that they're bringing from the airport, but as we have shown you, they are building a checkpoint on Highway 1 coming from Tel Aviv Ben Gurion Airport right into Jerusalem there, where the Jews that are supposed to be able to go freely into their own city will now have to go through a checkpoint to get permission to enter into the city. And we see Giulio Miotti did an article on Israel National News not too long ago saying the Jews will be evicted from Jerusalem. But the title of the article was that the Temple Mount uh, is what is important for the Jews to hold on to. Now, not exactly, I'm paraphrasing the title, but in his article he clearly says that the Jews will be uprooted and taken out of Jerusalem because of this Vatican decree. Now, the Vatican has already caused Jews being uprooted. We saw that in the news. Again, Scripture being fulfilled in Micah. That is Micah chapter 4. And let me just take and remind you of what happens in Micah there. Chapter 4, let's go to that one real quick like. Uh, and then we're going to move on into another incredible, incredible biblical prophecy that is about to fulfill right before your eyes. And Micah chapter 4, it says here in verse 10, Be in pain and labor and bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Now remember... God has brought Israel back to her homeland, and he says that they would dwell forever on Mount Zion, and of course they will. But trouble sets in in the, in the book of Micah, and we find out that there's serious trouble. And so God asks the, the Jewish people, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in tra tra travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. Are you serious? They're going to take the people, the Jews, out of the city of Jerusalem. Not all of them, no doubt, but many of them will. And they're going to have to dwell in the fields down there towards the Ben Gurion airport, somewhere in there. And they've already been evicting Jews in, in Judea and Samaria now. We're seeing this happen. Homes were demolished. Of course, Benjamin Netanyahu quickly gave an order to build more, but he said he can't override the court system. How can the president of Israel, or the, in this case the prime minister, not override the court system? Who is in charge? No wonder. The Bible says here uh, in, in, uh, in verse 9, Now why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Micah chapter 4 verse 9. Is there no king in thee? You see, Benjamin Netanyahu was, uh, uh, was anointed prime minister over Israel. And what happened? He has failed the people as being a king. He was anointed by Mike Evans as, as to be a king over Israel. And he prophesied that he'd be prime minister not once, but twice, two times he'd be prime minister. And he is in that second time. Now, we know he got reelected, but the point is, is that it's still the second season that he's in. So the question is, though, God says the king asked, is there no king in thee? And of course, Israel wanted a king. Saul was God's provide away a prophet, but Israel didn't want a prophet. But they will ask for one before long. Anyway, and did, has your counselor perished? Because why? The counselor, the prince of peace, the mighty God, Yeshua, who had came in, El Gibor, came to Israel 2,000 years ago, was rejected, killed. The counselor had perished. Now, 
let's move forward into what we're going to really see now. This is very interesting. Let me take you first to Pope Francis' schedule that is coming up. And by the way, uh, he will be, let's see, Tuesday, September the 22nd. He'll be in Washington, D.C. He arrives there at 4 p.m. from Cuba, uh, the Joint Base and Andrews Air Force Base there. And it says here that um, uh, he has a welcome ceremony on Wednesday at 9.15 a.m. Uh, with, uh, with President Obama at the White House. Uh, he, then then uh, he goes on Thursday, he addresses, now by the way, he's meeting with President Obama on that Wednesday. That's, it's not just a, ceremony, a welcome ceremony, but a meeting with the President Barack Obama. And Thursday, on September the 24th, in Washington, D.C., it says here at 9.20 a.m., he will address to, uh, to joint meeting of the United States Congress. Uh, then, he, uh, then he takes, an, on uh, Friday at 8.30 a.m., he'll be in New York City and visits uh, visit to the United Nations and address the United Nations General Assembly. Now, what's interesting, not only Pope Francis will be there addressing the General Assembly, even President Putin from Russia the first time in 10 years will be on hand for this. All the world leaders are coming together and speaking. What are they doing? They're bringing about the new world order. Now, the Catholic Church has already stated clearly there must be a one world government. There must be a head to the one world government. That's what the Pope has been doing. Not only that, have you noticed all the charismatic leaders that are joining up with the Vatican? It is unbelievable. Kenneth Copeland, John Hagee even wrote a letter of apology to the Catholic Church and it seemed that he no doubt did it under great pressure. It's on their own website, his apology letter. And it seems very sad because he always had a good teaching knowing that the Catholic Church was the whore of revelation. But unfortunately, the pressure was too much and he recanted all of his statements against the Vatican and said now he knows and understands the greater purpose that the Vatican serves even with Israel. Nonsense, Mr. Hagee. That is not true, my brother, and I am so sad to see that they got to you. I pray, though, my brother, that you will repent, even as I pray that Pope Francis will repent while he has time. But I'm afraid that you're about to see prophecy being fulfilled. I pray someone gives this video to John Hagee so that he can wake up himself. But there's been a huge move of the charismatic people moving towards Pope Francis as they all return to the mother whore, the great whore of Revelation, and her daughters are beginning to come back home in droves from around the world. He says that he wants a one world religion and he's bringing all the religions of the world together, the Muslims, the, the Christians, the charismatics, the evangelicals, they have broken down the walls of separation in every way they possibly can to make it all one. He wants a one world bank. And he even is like we have done. He is against the killing of animals. But don't let that fool you, my friends. You see, we stand also for the Essene humane gospel that Yeshua preached when he preached against the death of the animals, like Jeremiah preached against it, like Hosea preached against it, like Malachi preached against it, like Isaiah preached against it. We all stand for that as well. We stand for that here, that God has a humane law. And he says in the law that he gave Moses, thou shalt not kill. Jeremiah says that God never did uh, ordain sacrifices uh, to begin with, to your father. He did not instruct Moses in this way. In Jeremiah chapter 7, that is. All right, now, let me just quickly, though, let me share with you. Pope Francis, and some people have even said, Steve, you're preaching like him. He, doesn't, he says that people should be vegetarians. But his agenda is not godly. An antichrist, an antichristo, is someone that is just like the real deal, but he's got a false agenda. He's fake. Antichristo. He is a vicar of Christ. He claims to be in the place of Christ, that sits on the seat of Christ and, 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 and tells people and gives the orders as if he's God himself on this earth. And he's far from being the God of this earth. He is nothing but a man as you are a man. And he has the ability to repent like you have the ability to repent. But when he tells you to be a vegetarian, what is his agenda? Well, I can show you what the agenda is. Remember how the United States came out with a law not too long ago. And it was a law that scared the, the heebie-jeebies out of everybody because they were showing you that you couldn't even have a common garden. The law was too, too loose in its wording. See? Because why? You couldn't, you know, they have ability to shut you down and grow in your own garden. 
And here came an article here. I looked at this article here on, uh, it's called uh, The Permanent Culture Now. And uh, the, the guy says here at first glance, uh, speaking, because uh, he, he says, is this a conspiracy uh, theory once again? And says, the first thing I read that started the alarm bells ringing for the, was, was the two bills. And that bill is S425 and HR875, which were introduced to both houses and Senate and the U.S. Congress by Democratic uh, Rosa DeLora. This caused immediately co controversy as Rosa DeLora is married to Stanley Greenberg, who is a chairman and CEO of Greenberg uh, Quinlan Rosenbar Research, who have carried out work for biotech company Monsanto. Now, I will post this on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page, so you can see the rest of this article. Now, his argument here is, is that the reason why the government has passed these laws to stop you from growing gardens in your own home, put to close down the organic stores as well. They raided an organic store, police drawn in California. Uh, that was at the uh, Rawson Food Company in California who produced and sell raw organic food have been visited and arrested by armed SWAT police on two occasions. See, drawing weapons. They even got the video on here showing them. What are you going into a, a, a natural food store with your weapons drawn like they're a bunch of criminals? But what is the Pope's agenda? Why does he want you to go vegetarian? Because of what that first sentence spoke about there, about the, uh, the, the Quinlan Rosner research. You have carried out a work on biotech company of Monsanto. What is it? They are doing GMO food. The Pope wants you to go vegetarian because they want to force the world in eating ge genetically modified food to be able to corrupt your body and destroy you is what they want to do. This is the reason he does it. It's a different agenda altogether. Now, I don't want to get too carried away in this. As far as going into that direction there, I want to share with you the prophecy that the Pope of Rome is about to fulfill in the very near future. I'm taking you. The title of this video deals with the mark of the beast. And so you're probably wondering, when are we going to get to the mark of the beast? We're going to go to it right now. All right, now let's take, I want to take you to Revelation chapter 13. All right, in verse 1, we'll start right there. So I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Keep that in mind. The name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon, as we know, is Satan. Satan gives him his seat. And yet the Pope of Rome sits on his throne in the Vatican as the vicar of Christ, the, as the, the world leader, the man that is supposed to take the place of Yeshua on earth. They make no bones about it. That's what they believe. That's what the Catholic Church doctrine teaches. Okay? And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Well, to begin with, the beast is represented as a power. A beast in the Bible is, is an animal of power. But in this case here, we're also speaking of a man. But the reason the deadly wound is healed, that is not the deadly wound of an individual. That is because the Catholic Church was nearly destroyed and put out of business. And even Napoleon brought down the Pope of Rome. But it revived again. And a new revived Roman Empire is what we're seeing today. And the Pope, they, they have survived the deadly wound where it almost completely obliterated the Catholic Church. After her founding by Constantine and the Mithras priest that helped canonize their Bible, which King James has tried to give us a better version of that. But the Mithras priests worked together and they hid a lot of the words that should be there. Now, let me take you a little further. And they worshipped the dragon. No, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 3, and I saw, okay, we saw the head is wounded already. Now watch this here. And they worshipped the dragon which gave the power unto the beast. Do you know how you worship the dragon? Because the Catholic Church claims that Yeshua is who they're following, but they're not following Yeshua, they're following Satan. So when you 
sit there and you go and you bow before all those Catholic idols and images. And let me tell you something, all you guys and all you uh, church leaders that are going back and taking your flocks with you to go back to join to the Catholic church that is a worshiper of idols. No wonder why he had to alter the Ten Commandments and take it out about looking at the images because he didn't want the Word of God there. Because why? He knew if the Word of God was there, you might wake up. But you don't wake up. You end up worshiping the dragon. If you're in that kind of system, that's why God says in Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins and her plagues. Because you're worshiping Satan if you're any part of it. If you're in a church that is joined back up to the Catholic Church, come out of that church. I'm telling you, in the name of Yeshua, come out of it while you have an opportunity. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? That's exactly what it is today. Nobody can seem to make war with the Catholic Church. If you say anything against it, they stomp you out. Like Pastor D. He just, all he did was reveal what was in the encyclical before the encyclical was released because someone emailed it to him and now he's under investigation by his own government because the Catholic Church's pressure on him. Another brother in America said that the Pope was a false prophet and what have they done? They sent a bunch of agents to his, to his house to interrogate him as a terrorist. I don't wish no evil on Pope Francis whatsoever, but I am going to reveal to you who he really is. Yes, I will do that. So that you can choose not to worship this man, nor his image. Now, it says here, verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, See, the beast gets a mouth as the man. That's where the man comes into play. That's where Pope Francis comes into play. He is now the mouth to speak great blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. By the way, he's continuing that three and a half years. At the same time, the two witnesses are going to come on the scene as well. They come on the scene right at the same time. But there is a timeline when this begins, and you're fixing to find in Revelation when that time begins. Okay? Now, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. That's a lot of blasphemy. Now, I'm going to show you something, and you're going to see now why Constantine and the church fathers that helped him with the Mithras priests put the Bible canon together. And it's not that they didn't give you a lot of true books. They did. But they took out a lot too because they didn't want you to know the whole truth. Let me show you what it means and why it says that they would blaspheme. As a, Notice what the scripture says. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Let me read to you right here. This is from chapter 61 in the Essene Humane Gospel. Uh, I've broken it down in the, in, the, in the scholastic work that I'm doing on the one that I have. I've broken it down into not only into ch the chapters, but also into verses. So this is actually in verse 8. Let me read verse 7 for you first. Yeshua is speaking here. But the eternal spirit of all shall send forth his holy messengers, and they shall restore the holy law anew. That's the two witnesses. Which wicked men have hidden by their vain traditions. That's what happened with Constantine. Wicked men. Constantine never had a vision of heaven. He got Eusebius to put that later in years. You know, the first uh, mention that Eusebius writes about Constantine at his battle at the bridge there, 
He never mentions anything about crosses on his soldiers and, and he and put crosses on their shields and stuff. In fact, the Ark of Constantine clearly depicts nothing but paganism and not a single cross anywhere on there. But later, when he started to try to bring together Christianity along with the Mithras priests there, he, he spoke with Eusebius and got him to rewrite the story and put it in there as that he had some great vision of a cross and converted to Christianity. But there's not a single shred of evidence anywhere of any of that. You would think on the Ark to Constantine that was built for him that they would have put the crosses on the soldiers' shields that are depicted there, but they don't. So, he says here, Wicked men have hidden by their vain traditions, and those that believe not the holy law shall perish. And in that day shall all they that keepeth my law and commandment Commandments be hated of all nations for my name's sake, for many shall be offended at my holy laws. Because why? You've been taught all these years that eating meat is okay. You forget that God commanded in Genesis that he gave the humans the fruit of the trees and everything that has seed that brings forth, everything that has life within itself, the veg vegetables and things like that. You forget that that's what God commanded. When the children of Israel came out uh, 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 of, the, of Egypt, they had strictly a vegetarian diet. Then they began to lust for the flesh. God even says it. You lusted for the blood. He wasn't angry over the melons or the garlic that they, that they, were, that they were missing back in Egypt, but he said he was angry over the blood. So God permitted. See, there is a permissive will of God. You do what you want to, but there's a permissive will of God. And so God permitted them, the quail, sent the quail in, but God was so angry when they were eating it. The Bible records that while the flesh was between their teeth, he opened up the earth and swallowed them up, many of them. You know, God said to Noah in his day, he made a covenant, not just with Noah and his sons, but with the animals as well. And Noah was commanded not to eat any flesh, that had blood. Think about that. Of course, the rabbis twisted it and said, oh, as long as you take the blood out, you weren't to kill them, period. You go back to the millennial reign, the millennial reign, there's nothing going to kill or destroy in my holy mountain. In fact, God, even Yeshua himself speaks about this. He said, if you knew what this meant, you would have not have condemned the innocent. No, I'm sorry. He said, Yeshua says, he says, if you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would have not have condemned the innocent. In the Hebrew Matthew, he says, you would have not have bound the guiltless. It's in the masculine plural once again because of why. The blood of the bulls and goats that were bound on the altar, they were all males. Let's continue on right here. So he, so he says here, and they will betray one another and shall hate one another. For many false prophets shall indeed arise and shall deceive many. There's all kinds of prophets out there. All kinds of them that are deceiving the people on a regular basis and you don't even realize it. And, but, but he says, when the, when the holy law is restored, the people are going to hate you for it. And believe me, a lot of people hate me for it. And I'm not even one of the witnesses to restore it. But I'm hated for what I say about it. But verse 8 is what's important because it lines up with Revelation here. Yea, I tell you that in that age yet to come, speaking about our age, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world. What does it say here? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. What does Yeshua say right here? The Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. Now watch what he says next. For hands dripping with innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain and mislead many. Yeshua's name. Doesn't the Pope take the name of Jesus? For hands dripping with innocent blood of my creatures 
will take up my name in vain and mislead many, and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees and not the true path of the pure oblation. Mm. Even, the, even the little skull cap. Pope does it, so do, the, so do the Pharisees of today. But you know, the difference is with the Jewish people is God is about to open their eyes. And they will see that it's only a tradition. It was never something instituted by God. God never instituted a kippah whatsoever for a man to wear. Moses didn't wear one, neither did Abraham. It's a man-made tradition. And the Jews know that. They'll, they'll tell you that. They know that. But notice, though, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before. And who does it? Who blasphemes his name? The one that takes up Yeshua's name and his hands are dripping with blood of the innocent creatures of the earth. The slaughterhouses. I wonder how many, I wonder how many meat companies the Vatican has stock in or owns outright. The Vatican owns more stock and more companies in the world than you could ever imagine. I should have thought to do the research on that before I came on here. He may claim that you should be a vegetarian, but his hands are dripping with blood with the innocent creatures. And so are all the popes before him. They weren't vegetarians. Now, here's where it gets good. Now you're going to see where the prophecy comes in. I wanted you to be able to see who the man really was because this is why they don't let you see the seen gospel of Yeshua. Yeshua clearly shows you that the one that's going to blaspheme the Father's name is going to be the man that takes the name of Yeshua. Mm. Oh, let me finish reading to you verse 9, though. It says, Yea, many lies will be spoken of me in that age, things I spoke not unto you, nor taught not, for they, have, they will lust after much flesh and sin, and their evil will mount higher than a new moon of thy season, and many will believe and be lost. Isn't that interesting? They will teach things that Yeshua never taught. Like many times people write me, they say, well, didn't Jesus multiply the fish? That was added later to your Bible. You just didn't realize that. Do you know that the original manuscript, and, and this is what they had, one of the oldest manuscripts in London, England, has over 14,000 differences from the, uh, from the book you have today of the New Testament. That's just the New Testament alone. 14,000 differences. And you notice, ever, see, they, did, they weren't very good at doing this either. Did you notice later when Yeshua re, goes back and recounts the history of the multiplying of the bread, he doesn't mention anything about multiplying the fish? They forgot to add it there. That's what's so interesting. You know, that's why the Pope wears a fish god hat. He worships the fish god. This is why they added the fish in there. Because what? The lust of their... You know, you have to remember, if the children of Israel that came out of Egypt were lusting over the fish and God got so angry at them lusting over the blood of the fish that he condemned them. And while they were eating the quail, he gave them quail, but while they were eating it, he opens up the earth and swallows them up. No wonder why the Pope of Rome chose a fish, fish God to serve. No wonder why they put it in there. According to the Seen Humane Gospel, he multiplied bread and grapes, not fish. But Yeshua says right here, they'll change my words. I know this is hard for many of you, and I love you. Please understand me. You got to see what's coming next, though. If you want to know who this beast is, if you want to know who the Antichrist is, you've got to listen closely. You're about to find out because it's about to be fulfilled right before your eyes. In verse 7 of Revelation 13, and it was given unto him. Wait a minute. Hang on one second. Yes, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Did you hear what I just read? One, he's going to, he blasphemes the name of the Father like no other time in history. Verse 6, and he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Yeshua says to you right here in this inhumane gospel, 
He says right here, Yea, I tell you, in that age to come, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. Lines up with Revelation 13, doesn't it? But then he tells you who does it. Someone that his hands are dripping with the innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain and mislead many. Takes up Jesus' name. He's the one that blasphemes the name of the Father. Then it says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. That's those of you that truly believe. And here's the clincher. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. The Pope of Rome is coming to the United States he is coming, they're coming to declare a new world order. This is what they're wanting to do. They're, even Alex Jones is reporting that. The Pope of Rome, the Vatican, has written that there should be a one world government and they should put someone as a head and they make no bones about it. They want to be the head of this one world system. They want to be the head of the one world banking system and the one world government. And even on a Vatican website I read to you just recently and everything where they stated on there, there's no president of the United Nations. They said, but soon there will be. The Pope of Rome is going to be the head of this new world order. It says plainly right here. Notice how he says it right here. In verse 7, middle of the verse, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He becomes the leader of the world. Let's read the rest of the chapter. And at that and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. My God, I mean the people are already worshiping this Pope. I've never in my life seen more worship of a man than I have in this day here. And the Bible says when you worship him, you worship the dragon. You worship the devil. Because that's the God he serves. But Yeshua says in the Essene Gospel, he's going to take Jesus' name. He's going to take Jesus' name, but he's going to blaspheme the Father's name like never before. And he says in verse 9, If any man have an ear, let him hear. Watch this one. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You ministers, you church leaders, you churches that lead your church and your people into this Roman, ecumenical, one world government and join back up into this World Council of Churches, all you church leaders that have taken the vow with your 501c corporations to turn your people into the government, if you lead your people into captivity, God has swore that you will go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. You see what that is? The Bible says the word of God is more powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing asunder, even dividing and asunder the, the marrow. If you take the word of God and you slay your people by not telling them the truth, by hiding from them the, the words that Yeshua really spoke to the people, you're taking the word of God and you're killing them and God will kill you, destroy you in the end with the final judgment. That's what I mean by that, by the way. When the fire rains down out of heaven from God, that's how He'll kill you. His Word will bring down that fire. Now, verse 11, And I behold another beast cometh up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all power, the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. 
You got a charismatic, maybe even a messianic guy that's raising up on the scene that the world is going to think he's a, he's a prophet of God. And he is building, no doubt, I believe he's on the scene right now. One of these leaders out there, one of these major church leaders, he may be charismatic, he may be messianic, I don't know what he is, but I can tell you right now, there is a major leader on the scene right now that the people are believing to be a prophet. But the danger is going to be is when he points you to the Roman Catholic Pope and says that what this man is doing is the work of God. He'll lead you right into captivity. And he's going to do all kinds of signs and wonders so many people are going to fall for it. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. See? Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the by sword and did live. It's going to look good. Do you realize that, friends? One, the Pope of Rome, if they give him this new world order and they give him to be the head of the world, do you realize that's your prophecy being fulfilled right there in your eyes? But like the Pharaoh of Rome, which really is what the Catholic Church is, every Pope is a Pharaoh, is what he is, because their descendants are Esau's descendants, and Hadad was raised under the Egyptian tutorship. Moses was raised under the same thing, but Moses separated himself and went with the word of God. Hadad didn't. Hadad took all the paganistic traditions with him and took it right into the Catholic Church. And this is why you have fish gods. He wears a hat like, like the, the Pharaoh of Egypt, which also was a fish god and, and all this kind of nonsense. Okay, so this is what you've got. And this guy, this charismatic leader, maybe a messianic charismatic leader, is going to be a false prophet that is going to lead the people and make them believe that the Catholic Church has got the true way and he's going to lead you into captivity. And when you go into captivity, God will take them into captivity as well. This is your Janes and Jambers that withstood Moses. But it's only one in this case here. Janes and Jambers. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark and the name, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. See, it's not just a microchip, friends. Microchip might be the way that is facilitated. But you don't just have to have the, the mark of the beast. You can have his name. You could be Catholic. Why do you think God says, come out of her, my people? If you've got the name, or even the number of the name, and I don't know what the number of the name is, but I know what the name is. You won't be able to buy or sell. And that's what they're doing with this new world order. They're going to collapse the world economy. They're going to collapse every currency there is. And the reason they're doing this is just like in the apocalypse of Abraham that says that that king that rises up out of the south, he'll bankrupt the world economy with his Roman soldiers. Abraham is literally in his apocalypse is speaking of a future event. The Roman soldiers, because NATO are the Roman soldiers for the Vatican, but all these wars is bankrupting the world. Then he says he's going to do redistribution. Who's calling for redistribution? The Pope of Rome. In the Apocalypse of Abraham, he says that he will take from the elderly and give it to the poor. You know, again, it's like the Antichristo. He is like Christ. He's not the Yeshua. He's not Jesus. But he is the anti-type. He is similar to the way Christ is. He is a vicar. He pretends to be the man that says, don't kill the animals, like Yeshua said in the Essene Gospel. But his motive is to get you on GMO food to kill you with it. He says, redistribution of wealth. Yeshua said to the rich young ruler, you only lack one thing. Sell what you have and give to the poor. It was, Yeshua did believe in having equality amongst the believers. 
but he never did it by force. This man's going to do it by force. He's going to collapse your economy to where all your stocks and 401ks are worthless. And then he'll give you just pennies on your dollar. That's how he redistributes your wealth. So you won't be able to buy or sell unless you're part of the new world system. So the economy will collapse. It'll be down for maybe three months as they put everything back in place, get all things done up. Maybe a lot of riots in America as a result may last longer. I don't know. But the economy will pick back up again. But it's going to be a Pope economy. It's going to be a New World Order economy. It's going to be a Vatican economy. And the only way you'll be able to buy and sell in that economy is either you take the mark, you have his name, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. I've told you guys many times before. Vicarious filia dei. Instead of the Son of God is what that means. It's the Latin words. It's what's on the Pope's triple crown. Written on his triple crown. I've showed you the picture before. The Roman numerals that are on those Latin letters is 666 to the dot. In September, if they give power, now the New World Order may not get put into effect until maybe January of 2016, but whenever the Pope of Rome takes that power, according to Revelations 13, in verse 7, it says, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Once that power is given in the one world government, a new world order, once he's given that power, your 42 months begin. Your two witnesses will be on the scene. If they do it in September, it'll begin in September. According to Revelation 11, the two witnesses will be killed at the end of their ministry. And this is when God will take his bride and hide her because he'll pour his wrath out. There's other things I'd like to share with you on that, but we don't have time for that right now. I'll share it in another video. My friends that are watching this news broadcast, I encourage you to share this with every person you have. This is between life and death. You must come out of her, not just the Catholic Church, any church, any church leader, anyone that'll take you into the captivity of this new world order. is a serious danger to your soul. And God tonight has revealed to you who that man is. Who is going to lead the nations and lead the people to ruination. The economy will come up even though he's going to collapse it. You'll have more things in common afterwards, that's for sure. But there's going to be a rebound. Oh, don't think the Pope is going to give up his gold or the Vatican golds or any of things like that. They're only going to take your money. Friends, it's a serious hour. Very serious. We love you. We're praying for you. If you believe this ministry, stand with us and support this ministry. And many of you have been showing that, again, even though I'm preaching so hard, we've lost a lot of people as a result. But a lot of you have stayed on as well because you want to know the truth as well. We want to know the truth. And I'm trying to show you that time and time again. Pray for us, and we'll be praying for you as well. God bless you, and good night. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. You can go to our website, israelinewslive.org, if you want to be a part of this ministry and news broadcast, or israelreturns.com. Shalom, good evening.